Hi everyone. Um, so this is my homemade 3D printer um, with the new add-on of this ghetto contraption that I have 3D printed in six minutes and it was just something I made up really quick on the fly. Uh, simple brace, you know, and it's strapped on to the, uh, to the pressure spring of the filament spool or the filament uh, feeder. And before I did this, before I did got the plastic thing built in, um, I just taped a pen straight onto this uh, stepper motor and that was how I did the drawing. So um, I drew this. This is the first thing I drew. Uh, it was Mercy from Overwatch. And as you can see, there's like a million layers of cross hatching, tons of uh, draw, what's it, travel. <clears throat> travel schmears and whatever and I didn't really know what I was doing because I was literally just like gone an image and uh, lifted it up you know like 2D image that was a PNG and then just went psh, made it thick <clears throat> but disabled the z-axis and uh, that didn't go so well but I mean it was the first image and as you can see it's it it made an image. It's pretty cool. The eyes look demonic as fuck, but you know, <clears throat> that was the first one. And after this, I was like, oh, this is kind of viable. What, what else can I do with it? So, uh, I made some test prints and by test prints, I mean, uh, at first I tried it again. Like I tried this same image, but in a different, uh, slicer program, and uh, it was just drawing a square, and I thought that it was doing like I thought it was doing like fancy circles, and that somehow the sl or the G code maker was smart enough that every time it intersected, see how it has these like kind of darker areas. I thought that would end up making the image, and I was just like I just couldn't see it, you know, like it was magic. It turns out it, my tape was just very loose on the pen, and that there was way too much pressure on the Z axis, so. Uh, that also explains why these lines aren't exactly uh, straight. Like, you know when um, when you print and it does the starting brim or the starting skirt or whatever? <clears throat> the, uh, the lines weren't being straight. And then uh, after I adjusted that, so I, I adjusted all the uh, thumb screws. Well, not the thumb screws, but screws on the bed. Uh, and that helped a lot. So, like, you could see as I was trying, I was drawing uh, squares try to get it to work and then after I got it basically matched up I printed out this image and it actually printed out pretty well. Uh, I wish I printed it again because it's pretty cool. <clears throat> I think it's from k -On. So I was like let's see how how crazy we can go. So this is still before I made the uh, before I did the 3D printed pen holder thing. I was just seeing like how stupid could I go. Um, and you can see there's a lot of crossing over, uh, two layers of cross hatching. So this is actually a, uh, a two layer image. Um, you can see where the lighter area is like, uh, I believe Rin's mouth, uh, some of this like collar, some of Miku's collar, <coughs> some more collar down here. It's not cross hatched, but everything else that's really black is cross hatched. But, uh, yeah, this was a vector image, so black and white only. Uh, same with this, black and white. And then, yeah, but it, it had some tones of gray, so that was cool. And then I was trying out with some more simple images. And this one had a lot of jumps. And I was like, I wonder if I can fix those jumps. And then apparently there's something called like Z jump or Z hop or something like that uh, in Cura. And then when I enabled it, uh, I got something like this. <clears throat> so, in comparison to the two images, much less hopping here. But I am running a very old version of Cura and Repetir, and um, since this is an offline machine, uh, updates don't exactly come. So, uh, maybe if I update it, I'll get almost no jumps. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> But still, before I did the jumps, uh, the jump fix, 
uh, I printed out some more images. So this one is a um, this one I was playing with the uh, the black trim on it, so I can adjust the black settings. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of jumps here. Uh, and for the part with the letters, it's a double cross hatched, so it's cross hatched. Um, you know, so it's two layers, but then everything else is a single layer. And then this is obviously after I fix the jump. So if you want to see that again, the left side is without jumps or with the Z hop disabled. And then this is with Z enabled. <clears throat> and then I wanted to see how detailed I could get again. Obviously, since I was able to do this, I should be able to do something like this pretty simple. Uh, Aki from something revenge, you know, <clears throat> and then uh, just another image to see how kind like what kind of black fills can I get, and uh, basically how big could I make the image? Because I think this was the biggest image that I made, and this is the also kind of the biggest because my print bed isn't exactly huge, but it is pretty big for the price. And uh, the next one is kind of like a regression, I guess you can say. It's not that it's a regression, but this was a test of um, what is the absolute minimum amount of detail to get a good vector going in uh, for a slicer. And I guess this is about the minimum. Uh, it's from Nisikoi. But yeah, that was the last image I did <coughs> before giving this doggy a bath. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you want any information on how I did the slicing and <coughs> image manipulation, you can look it up, you know, <laughs> or, uh, or just ask me in the comments and I will make a video. Thanks for watching.